It's impossible to make a film for everybody. I want to reach those who are not going to church. How you do it? Through art and through works that are hard to be against what she did. And it's obvious that she got this strength from heaven, from God. This movie is perfect for this time. So many people didn't even know what a woman is anymore, you know? <laughs> Come and see Cabrini and you will understand what a powerful uh, woman is when they recognize who their creator is and when they put God into the center of their lives. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Lila Rose podcast. Today, we're going to be talking again with Eduardo Verastegui. He's a repeat back to the podcast, and he is a filmmaker, a producer. He also recently ran to be the president of Mexico. And before that, he left a very successful career as one of the lead actors in Mexico in the telenovela space, had a radical conversion to Christianity, and then devoted his life wholeheartedly to God. He has helped produce and acted in multiple films since, including the amazing pro film Bella from 15 years ago, Sound of Freedom, the recent amazing hit. We actually had him on the show last summer to talk about Sound of Freedom. He was in the movie as well as helping produce the movie. And now he's here to talk about Cabrini, the latest creation from Eduardo and his team and distributed by Angel Studios. I've already done my movie review on this podcast to talk about Cabrini, but we're going to go behind the scenes with Eduardo. We're going to talk about some of the criticism that Cabrini has received from both Catholics and radical anti-life feminists. We're going to talk about what went into Cabrini, the heart and soul behind it, and some of Eduardo's own experience being involved with the film. We're also going to hear a little sneak peek about what is next for Eduardo and his team, and I couldn't be more excited about it. I really mean that. What they're going to do next is truly a dream come true for me to get to see what they're going to create next after the Caprini. So make sure to listen to this whole episode and you'll hear about that at the end. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the show if you haven't already. Thank you so much for listening to the Lila Rose podcast. And if you're not already supporting us on Patreon or Locals, please do. That's how this podcast can reach more people. Eduardo, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you for for your support in everything that we do. Yeah. So last time we talked about Sound of Freedom, which was amazing. And now you are on tour to promote another amazing film. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. It brought me to tears. It inspired me. But Cabrini is now in theaters. Well, thank you so much. This project, uh, first time I heard about Cabrini was 20 years ago, uh, actually 90 years ago, when I met Eustace Wolfington and Sean Wolfington. Uh, Alejandro Monteverde and Leo Severino and myself, he flew to Philadelphia to meet with uh, Eustace and Sean to discuss uh, Bella. Uh, mm-hmm. As you know, they financed uh, our movie Bella and they became our executive producers and business partners in 2004. Uh, wow, 20 years ago. It's, it's <laughs> been a long time. Um, and then we heard for, you know, we heard for the first time um, Mother Cabrini, when Yusuf told us that she was the same, that she, that he, you know, has a lot of devotion to her. And, uh, but I, you know, we never thought about making a movie about Mother Cabrini. It was until we finished Bella. Then he started talking about the possibility of making a movie one day about Mother Cabrini. But then we started doing Little Boy. So we were completely focused on, on, on Little Boy. Then after Little Boy, he, he said, well, I think we're ready to do Mother Cabrini. And that's when I uh, started doing Sound of Freedom. Uh, eight years ago, and then again, I was just focused 100% with Alejandro uh, doing Sound of Freedom for eight years. And somehow it was perfect. You know, the, the time was perfect because we were training uh, mm-hmm. with Bella, with Little Boy, with Sound of Freedom, so we can be ready for Mother Cabrini. And thanks to the success of Sound of Freedom, Angel Studios now opened the door for Mother Cabrini. So we didn't have to wait years, like in Bella was five years, in Little Boy was five years, in Sound of Freedom was eight years. Mother Cabrini, which just finished the movie last year, and I can believe that now we're in theaters. Thanks be to God. Thanks to Angel Studios, and and of course thanks to Eustace Wolfington because he's the one who, you know, through his perseverance and uh, mm. uh, he he was just you know waiting for the right time, and I think the right time was now. 
A big thank you to our sponsor, Seven Weeks Coffee. SevenWeeksCoffee.com is America's pro-life coffee brand. They're also gourmet, small batch, acid-free, ethically sourced coffee that's delicious. And I'm very excited to share that they have something new that's called the Heartbeat Club. With the Heartbeat Club, if you become a monthly subscriber to get their delicious small batch coffee directly delivered to your door, you get 15% off your order. So you get your coffee at 15% discounted. It's called the Heartbeat Club because the baby, when they're the size of a coffee bean in utero, is when the heart first starts beating. So I love the pro-life message carrying through the entire Seven Weeks Coffee brand. And if you make your order today, go to sevenweekscoffee.com, you'll get 15% off your monthly order of coffee that comes to your door and an additional 10% off using the code Lila at checkout. So you get 25% off your first month of coffee. So go to sevenweekscoffee.com today. Know that when you buy that coffee, you're getting your 25% off using the code Lila. You are also supporting the pro-life movement with 10% of all proceeds going directly to serve mothers and babies in need. In fact, I know I'm going on here, but it's so important. Over $325,000 have already been donated directly from Seven Weeks Coffee to help moms and babies in need. So what are you waiting for? Go to sevenweekscoffee.com, join the Heartbeat Club, use the code Lila at checkout, and enjoy your Seven Weeks Coffee. Okay, so there's so much to talk about here, but Mother Cabrini is the first American saint People are now learning her name because there's this incredibly beautifully produced movie about her hitting theaters across the country. And it's coming to I Know Latin America very soon. It's going to be worldwide. And how, why and how? Eustace, you mentioned Eustace Wolfington, who I believe is one of the lead producers. Mm-hmm. And this was kind of his uh, part of his inspiration. Why Mother Cabrini? What was it that fascinated him, drew him in, that wanted to say, mm-hmm. this is the, the saint I need to make an epic mm-hmm. film about well uh, he he was inspired by her uh, by her story from day one when he uh, knew about her the patron of the uh, uh, American immigrants and uh, and he had a devotion to her um, she changed his life and she gave him what he needed at that time when he was uh, going through a lot and somehow she became this role model for him mm-hmm. and now I understand why you know in the beginning I didn't know uh, because I didn't know too much about her. I mean, we have thousands of Catholic saints that, uh, you know, I have devotion to St. Joseph and St. Augustine mm-hmm. and a few others, of course, in France of Assisi. But there's thousands that we don't that we don't even know that exist that are amazing heroes in our faith. And there are our brothers, uh, brothers and sisters, our older brothers and sisters in the faith. And when finally I got to know Mother Carrie in details when Rod Barr wrote the script. And uh, because now it was in a language that I, that I, you know that I like to. Uh, I read more scripts than, than 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 books about saints. You know, even though I have read a, a lot of a lot, uh, you know, biographies of the saints. Still, there's thousands of amazing stories that is. In, I mean, you have to dedicate your entire life to study the lives of saints, and you will only touch one percent, maybe mm-hmm. maybe less. Right? Uh, thanks be to God, we have a, we have a lot of heroes in the faith. And uh, but Mother Cabrini went. So, my gosh, where I was. This is amazing. What an amazing woman that she confronted. You know, she was, I mean, the whole world was against her. Uh, even members of the church didn't believe in, in, in her mission. And then corrupt politicians in, in New York that she met that were against her. And organized crime and and even her uh, her own health. She was mm-hmm. fighting her own health. And, uh, and at, at a time where women didn't have any voice, what an amazing role model of perseverance. That's for me, true womanhood, true feminism. When when women are empowered by God, anything they do, they turn to be a miracle because it's God working through them. And uh, and that's when I realized this movie is perfect for this time. You know, when so many people are confused and uh, so many people didn't even know what a woman is anymore. You know, <laughs> uh, well, you come and see Cabrini and you will understand. <laughs> What a powerful uh, woman is when when they recognize who their creator is and when they put God in the center of their lives, anything is possible uh, uh, for them. And uh, and that's my hope as a filmmaker, that when people come and see this movie, especially mm-hmm. parents, when they bring their daughters, that they will leave not only entertained, they will leave inspired, uh, wanting to be more like a Brini and not like Barbie. <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. I and that's what I loved about it too, because you see her, and it was so historically accurate. They took so many scenes. I know there was a lot of faithfulness to her life and what happened, what she actually did mm-hmm. in New York City. She comes from mm-hmm. Italy. She shows up with nothing. She's going to serve the orphans. She has nothing, you know, herself, mm-hmm. and she's building this completely from scratch. You know, getting basically begging people for help. And whenever there's a wall that shows up to confront her to stop her, she just goes right through the wall. Yes. You know? Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, the, other, yeah. the, the other thing um, that I think is very important, I don't know if you know, you remember the story where St. Francis, you know, he was he was with his brothers uh, and then his brothers tell St. Francis, I mean, St. Francis tell his brothers, let's go out, let's go and evangelize the, the, the nearest town uh, uh, from us. And they went to this town and, and they spent the entire day in the town. And when they came back, you know, the brothers were like, uh, Hermano Francisco, we thought we were going to evangelize. And so we did. No, we, we, we never talk about God to anybody. We did when we helped the, the sick person, when we helped the older lady, when we helped, you know, all these words, that's how we did it, you know. And, and if it's necessary, then use words. But sometimes uh, you, you show your faith through your words. And that's why uh, Alejandro and, and Eustace and the whole team, we were like, we were like, what are we going to tell about Mario Cabrini? Because mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot. I mean, we can do a TV series of 100 episodes and it's not enough. And we have only two hours. And uh, we thought, you know what? Let's imitate what St. Francis did. So let's show her faith through her works. And uh, then we can um, hopefully touch the hearts of people who believe in God and people who doesn't believe in God or people who have another religions. They're, they cannot ignore the works that she did in, and, and, and she wears the entire habit with the cross, you know, the side of her chest. So it's obvious who inspired her to do what she was doing. Right. And, uh, but I think that's more effective in, 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 in our goal to entertain, bring people closer to God, um, by imitating, imitating her in what she did, uh, because art has the power to, you know, to influence how people think for good or for bad. And, and especially young people, they have this tendency to imitate art. Well, if that's true, our hope is that when they come and see Cabrini, they will imitate her in, in, in their, you know, everyday life. And that's why the movie for me mm-hmm. and for Alejandro and the entire team begins when the film finished. Because now you mm-hmm. have to carry the legacy of Mother Cabrini in your own life. That's our hope. I, I love that. Yeah, so this film has received rave reviews from many people, like Rotten Tomatoes, all the critics. People are just saying it's so beautifully done, the cinematography, the acting, the screenwriting. So tons of positive commentary from lots of people. There have been some critiques of the film from Mm -hmm. Catholics, actually, or some Christians saying, oh, you know, there were some good themes in here and whatever, but, oh, she, it, it made it seem too much that she was reliant on her own power. We didn't get to see her spirituality. No, she mm-hmm. was praying in the church at one point. You certainly, mm-hmm. you know, she's quotes scripture. She's a nun, you know, she's a sister, right. she's a religious. You see her habit. She's walking mm-hmm. the streets of New York as a celibate religious, you know, as a mother Cabrini. Uh, but I can understand, you know, these mm-hmm. critics wanting to see, oh, we want to see her prayer more. We want to see her spirituality. We want to see her talking right. about Jesus. And I know it was a decision made by your, the team to say, mm-hmm. we want to show what people saw externally to her. Right. I mean, the, the, these private moments she had with God, of which there were so many, she has all these journals. I've mm-hmm. read her journals. They're amazing. Her letters about her faith. And there's so much richness there, but we got to see her works, like you said, and her works were incredible and they're inspiring mm-hmm. and they show us true womanhood. Tell me more about how the team sees this and, and responds to this criticism to focus on these well, external you know, works. Well, yeah. First of all, we didn't make the film for them. You know, uh, it's impossible to make a film for everybody, you know, I mean, because it's art. And if, imagine if, if, if he, she were, if a mother Cabrini in the movie pray for rosaries, completely, like, like literally 40 minutes of the movie is she spraying the rosary. And then other 40 minutes is just, uh, you know, meditating after reading the Bible. And then the last 20 minutes of the film is she's working. They will still complain, how can she didn't do a holy hour? You know, <laughs> they, they were complaining. Uh, uh, you never please. They, they should be grateful that there's a movie about a nun uh, with that quality that is out there in theaters, in more than 3,000 theaters, you know. And it's very easy to criticize. But uh, I, for all those who criticize it, why don't you make the movie and make it, you know, <laughs> make the movie about the same train the entire movie? And then uh, and I, I will go and see it. Uh, but um, 
you know, at the end of the day for us was how can we reach people that are not in the church? You know, uh, why should I tell my mother, come and see Karina so you can go to Mass? She go to Mass every day. She's there. Thanks be to God, you know. Or come and see Karina so you can learn how to pray the rosary. Uh, uh, to those who already pray the rosary every day, they're already there. So I want to go and show the movie to other people that are not, uh, that they don't, uh, they don't believe in the church for whatever reasons, or they left the church. But who can criticize a nun who went through what she went through? And uh, and it's obvious that she got the strength from heaven, from God. I mean, she quotes the Bible. She mentioned the word God more than 12 times. When she's in the chapel, Catholics, we understand them when it's a candle. It's the presence of Jesus Christ in the tabernacle. She spent the entire night there. What is she going to do? She's going to be praying. In movie, there's a rule that, is, uh, that, that's, that says, show, don't tell. Show, don't tell. It's, this is not a documentary. It's art. You know, when, when you see a painting uh, of uh, Michelangelo, you know, we, with what image? You can see the entire gospel, you know, with one image. Well, same thing here. You see a movie that lasts two hours, and you see a lot of symbolism that tells you who she is, why she's doing what she's doing. And, uh, and, and for us, that was, that, was, that was enough, you know, to show her faith through the works that she did for others, not to herself, you know. And, um, and to show this uh, feminist movement that is around the world that for me, that every day they touch, it's destroyed, that true feminism is and true empowerment is when a woman recognizes who God is and God is the center of their lives. Then that's Mother Cabrini and that's, the, that's what you're doing. And that's what, uh, you know, many um, godly women are doing today. And, uh, and it's, it's good to, like, to compare, you know, uh, who represents. There is women in Mexico right now uh, burning the posters of Cabrini. She doesn't represent Crazy. us. You know, she doesn't represent us burning the posters. She doesn't Cabrini. represent don't go us. And see, <laughs> yeah, don't go and see this movie. Of course, she doesn't represent you, unfortunately. And, uh, but, but she represents the majority of the Mexican women. You know, and uh, so it's this controversy of, of uh, I don't care too much about the, uh, the, the, uh, the critics on, on Catholics because the critics is like, oh, I, I wish I could see her praying more. I'm worried about these women burning posters of Cabrini screaming, she doesn't represent us. And uh, that's like, uh, wow, how sad it is. It breaks my heart, you know, like, yeah. she doesn't represent you. I mean, in, in what Art, she doesn't represent you. Look what she did. She was amazing. What an amazing woman. And uh, and even and we tried to do the movie more for like them so they can hopefully mm -hmm. recognize. You know, I thought there's impossible for a, 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 a feminist movement to criticize Carbini, right? Well, even even with the even with this uh, uh, choice that we made to tell the story through her words, there's people saying. She doesn't represent us. So, wow, that's sad, you know? I mean, if you break it down, she's a celibate, right? So the message to today's women, right, is that our sexuality is something that we totally control and we can use Sorry. as we please. And there's no limits or morality except for consent. And so you have this, you know, she is modest beyond belief. Obviously, she's wearing her habit and she is mm -hmm. celibate. She's chosen celibacy so she can be wholly devoted to what? Helping other people's souls. Mm -hmm especially children. And I, I love that pro-life theme throughout the film because, you know, today the child, feminism today, modern feminism rejects the child, right? We abort mm -hmm. the child. I mean, in America alone, a million abortions every year. I know how passionate you are about this too, Eduardo. We, we share this. And Mother Cabrini literally goes to New York for the children. She's mm -hmm. going there to rescue children. She There's a scene, she goes into the gutter, into the sewer system because little children are orphaned and sleep underground to be, have some kind of warmth. And there's a scene where one child dies from exposure underground and she's trying to rescue them. So it's a radical countercultural message. Celibate yeah. religious woman mm -hmm. in the name of God going to rescue children and mother them when the modern feminist woman is encouraged to reject children. Completely the opposite. You know, it's the worst upside down. Uh, that's why... You know, this is an amazing opportunity for us men to honor the most beautiful creation by God, which is women. But women are beautiful when women recognize who God is. And that applies for men, too. But we're talking about women now. And, and when God is the center of their lives, they change the world. The most powerful woman on earth, Mother Mary. 
Uh, she said yes to God, and then the rest is, is history. Well, same thing. We can, we all can, we are children of God. We're all created in the image of likeness of God. And when we recognize who we are and we allow God to be the center of our lives, beautiful things happen, like in Mother Cabrini. And, um, and that's why, uh, you know, I'm, I'm begging every parent to bring their wives, their, I mean, uh, men to bring their wives, to bring their uh, daughters, their mothers their, you know, cousins, their grandmothers, and it's a way to honor women, uh, but women, you know what I'm saying? You know, in a time where people doesn't even know what a woman is, it's, it's unbelievable. And so if, if you don't know what a woman is, come and see Cabrini, you will, you will know what a woman is, you know? I'm very picky about my skincare products and have used many different brands over the years and have never really landed on one that I liked. And so I was really excited when I sampled NimiSkincare.com and their skincare products that I found a product that I love. Their moisturizers are great, their sunscreens, their cleansers. This is a company that not only has clean ingredients that are paraben free, that are low on the scale of any kind of toxins, but this is a company that delights in making really high quality products, simple skincare lines that also support your value. So if you go today to NimiSkincare.com, that's N-I-M-I Skincare.com, you can use the code LILA at checkout for 15% off your order. Check out their vitamin C cleanser, which I love. Check out their moisturizing cream, also amazing, and their brightening sunscreen. Those are just some of the products that I love. You'll find the ones that are best for you. Go to NimiSkincare.com today and use the code LILA at checkout for 15% off your order. I think I think letting yourself watch it, because when I watched it, I cried I was inspired. I was moved. And then, yes, I was like, I want to see her pray more. I want to see all these things about her life. But you have two hours, like you said. Yeah. And, you know, and as you said, you know, the work and the love that's been put into the film is obvious. It's an mm-hmm. incredibly made film. It's, it's Oscar worthy, even the critics are saying. And what can we do if we want more art like this in the world? We enjoy it. We celebrate it. We share it. Because we're seeing this countercultural, radical representation of true womanhood, as John Paul II has called it, St. John Paul II, Pope John Paul II has called this term the feminine genius to describe how women can uniquely offer love and nurture and receptivity to the world. So while I understand the critics and and I share like the desire, like I want more of it, right? I want more of right. Mother Cabrini's heart and soul. We've got this, what we've got is beautiful. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's beautiful. And so let's I celebrate what, what we have did, and, and do part two, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I think what I handled this is amazing. You know, he's, he's an amazing filmmaker. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way how the uh, the lighting, uh, the, the the scenes, the acting of all the, the cast was uh, unbelievable. The music, I mean, to have Andrea Bocelli singing a song at the end with his daughter um, mm-hmm. uh, for the credit song, it, it's it's very powerful. And, and again, for us, we choose to show the works. The worst, you know, because we live in a time where, you know, even Catholics were being criticized by nothing Catholics that we don't care about the poor, that we don't care even for lifers. You know, they were being accused that, yeah, you guys for life. Yeah, right. You just care about the baby, the womb. But then when the baby is born, you don't care. What do you mean we don't care? We, we care from A to Z. So it's showing Mother Cabrini caring for those who are living literally in conditions that are inhumane, where the rats are living in better conditions than, than the Italian immigrants uh, living in New York at the time. To, so to show that, uh, how can you criticize that? Uh, I'm talking about from the other side, right, who, who thinks that we don't care about the poor. Well, here you have an amazing saint who not only came here uh, to the United States legally, um, immersed in the culture with her broken English, told her nuns, we speak English now, we're in America. She became American, and then she became the first uh, American canonized saint. I mean, what an amazing uh, contribution she gave to America and to the world. And uh, and that's why it was important, if you will focus too much in her faith, meaning like, you know, she prays, she got a mass, she's in the holy hour and everything. Then we're making a movie for Catholics only to, like, do this to ourselves. I want to bridge those who are not going to church. And I, how you do it? Through art and through works that are hard to against what she did and if you fall in love with her that's the first step the second step is like mm-hmm. where did she pull all her strength well god and then you study more and then when you study more then you're going to see who she who she is completely you know but you have two hours remember it's like making a movie about you in two hours 
it's, it's, it's difficult. What do you tell, you know, well, when, before she got married, when she's married, when she, uh, <laughs> when she went to the, uh, uh, you know, abortion clinics, you know, on, mm-hmm. you know, undercover, uh, it's impossible to do everything in two hours. So you have to left a lot of things behind and then, and, and, and unfortunately that's movie. That's what movie is. You know, you have two hours <laughs> of 80 years of 60 years or 50 years of, of someone. It's, it's almost very unfair because there's a lot of things that we want to tell that it was impossible. Uh, it was like, we need a TV series, 100 episodes, maybe one day, you know? Yes. I mean, the only other film I can think of about a saint that is this level of quality mm-hmm. and beauty and inspiration and faithfulness is St. Thomas More Man for All Seasons. But, yes. you know, I don't know what other film we have. And that was in the 40s. Know. Can you imagine and that was, in the 40s Yeah, it was like almost 100, you know, not 100, mm-hmm. but, you know, 80 years ago. So, mm-hmm. This is like, this is a new renaissance. I mean, uh-huh. your team, Eduardo, I know Metanoia Films. I know uh, what um, Alejandro has done, the the director, uh-huh. um, you know, Leo Severino, Alejandro Monteverde. Like your team, what you guys are doing is revolutionary for the arts because you're bringing the true faith and you're making it not just accessible to millions of people, but you're doing it in a way that is with mm-hmm. with complete excellence. And so I just yeah. want to commend you for that because I know it takes a tremendous amount of work and a ton of money, you know, a big investment to, to do mm-hmm. this. But your guy, you, I mean, this is your best film yet. It is your best Thank film. Thank you. Yet. Thank you so much. And then uh, yeah, please go and see it and bring your family. This movie will change your life. And, uh, and if you want to pray more, uh, well, I invite you to pray with me. Uh, I pray the rest of your day <laughs> life, you know? <laughs> One, so one you can more play qu- with the filmmakers, you know. Huh? Everylife.com is America's fastest growing diaper and baby product company. These are best in class products for your little one that have great quality ingredients that wear well, have great quality ingredients and are great for your little one's skin. Everylife.com is also a company that shares your values. They're a pro-life company that donates money back to the pro-life movement to support moms and babies in need. So go to everylife.com today. You can order your diapers and wipes. You can order a subscription and save money on that and get these best in class baby products directly to your door. Don't forget to use the code Lila at checkout at everylife.com for 10% off your order and buy these awesome products supporting the pro-life movement for your little one. One more question for you, Eduardo. What was your favorite part of the movie? What was your favorite part of Cabrini? Well, that's hard because, you know, it's so, so many, uh, every single time that I see it, there's a, it's almost like when the Bible, when you open the Bible and then there is one verse that talks to you in that moment, but the next day something else. And it's hard, I mean, to find a, a you know, I, you know I, I think the end is powerful just because of what we're going through right now with uh, where, where people doesn't even know what a woman is. So when when the uh, mayor tell her, you know, you will make a good, a great man, Mother Cabrini. And, and she answered like, there is things that women can do that men can't. You know, I think that's because we live in a play in, in an era where there's a lot of competition. But we shouldn't compete. We should be we should complement. I think together we're stronger. Uh, I don't, you know, women doesn't have to be a man. Men doesn't have to be a woman. I think men is a man, woman is a woman, and together we're stronger and we complement. And um, we help. We should help each other. And together we can form families. We can dream big. We can change the world together. And and I think uh, it's very important that this is not a competition. And, and multi mm-hmm. women somehow answer that. Uh, there's things that women can do that men can't. And there's things that men can do that women can't. But together... We can do great things for God, you know. But I think the other thing is like that she didn't give up. Uh, yeah, it's very. We live in a um, in times where the other day I was talking to a friend of mine, and uh, he was saying that his daughter, you know, she was depressed. And I said, why? Because she doesn't have enough followers on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I said, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? No, no, really. And and then when she posts something and she doesn't have, she doesn't have enough likes, she's depressed. She doesn't want to eat. And well, bring her to see Cabrini. Because this woman went through a lot and she never gave up. So we live in a very fragile, uh, this generation is very fragile. They, they literally, they want to throw themselves from out of the window just because the boyfriend didn't call her or something. I mean, it's very fragile. And I, and I like to see a woman that is strong, like Mother Cabrini, that she never gave up, that she fought until the end. And she was like uh, brave and, 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 uh, and we need more men and women like that. 
uh, fighters, so she, fighters of freedom, was, you know? What was so good is her, her strong, because we hear the strong woman thing a lot, you know, in Hollywood mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. in media and politics. Like, she's such a strong woman. But her strength was not about her self-discovery. Exactly. It wasn't about her own, you know, pursuits and accomplishments. Her strength was about loving other people. And that's what the, that's true strength, actually. The, anything else that is not that is actually weakness. And I it's think that is that is the message we need to hear because like you said, so much of the younger generation today, I mean, all of us, we struggle with self mm-hmm. obsession, right? It's all about us and social media and how we appear and how people think of us and what we can do and what our you know convenience level is, our comfort levels. But if we instead orient our life in terms of what is God's plan for my life, that's for the what, sake of love, it that's, changes everything. For me, strength. That's for me what strength is. Mm-hmm. You know, when I, when I, when I talk about uh, strong men or strong women is a godly women and a godly man, godly men, you know, when, when they know what the purpose of their life is, when they know that they have to be willing to die for themselves, ego, vanity, pride, so God can be the center, Jesus Christ can be the center of their lives, our lives, and then that's how we can do anything, anything, size so the limit, that's the true mm-hmm. dream, you know, and that's why we're here for, you know, to know and to love and to serve God, to become saints, like Mother Gabriela, she's a saint, <laughs> and uh, uh, so um, we're all called to be to become saints like her. And that's only possible by the grace of God, of course, by having him in the center of our lives. Uh, and of course, if I'm speaking to a Catholic audience, well, then through a sacramental life, praying the rosary, mm. read the, you know, read the Bible every day, um, serve others, you know, fast, penance, all that. That's a language that even, even Catholics, they don't even understand that language anymore. Can you imagine the whole world outside of the Catholic Church? So that's why part two, uh, Eduardo, <laughs> part two of Cabrini can get can get more into that. You know, the, the sequel, uh, mm-hmm. there's so much more to her life, obviously, even beyond what you were you can show in two hours. But, I, you know, one other thing, Angel Studios, it's a huge deal that they picked up this film and they're distributing it. Mm-hmm. I mean, this film is more than worthy of it. It's the most it's so beautifully produced. It's an amazing film. Uh, but it's so interesting because, you know, this is very Catholic. Mm-hmm. It's about a Catholic saint. Uh, she's mm-hmm. a religious sister. It's her story. And it's amazing to me that it's it's done in such an ecumenical way and that people from all faith traditions and then no faith tradition right. are able to watch it. And now, you know, Angel Studios, well, not a Catholic studio, is, is distributing it. How did that all happen? Precisely because of how we did the movie. Again, if you did the movie, would it be all about like two hours of she's sitting in front of the Sacramento sacrament? Uh, well, then... Then, then that would that would never happen, you know. But because what she did in the movie and the the uh, parts that we choose to tell is universal, no one can be against someone that is helping the poor, regardless of uh, who she was, who she is, right? And uh, so that's why I think uh, they understand that the need of telling these kind of stories to the world it's ben- it's very um, it's, it benefits the world, you know, and. Uh, so the movie doesn't feel like, you know, she is right there evangelizing, meaning like you have to convert, you have to believe in what I believe, otherwise you're going to go to hell. And mm-hmm. that, that's, this is not about that, you know, or, you know, only people who believe in this, or this is, this is not a theology. This is not a movie about theology or apologetics or, or this is just a movie about a woman who loved God so much, who gave her life to him. Mm-hmm. And because of that, she's inspired to help the ones who are in most need. Simple. It's, it has to be simple. And the movie is simplicity all the way with beautiful art. And anyone, um, you know, can see that. And, uh, and Angel Studios saw that. I said, guys, this film, I mean, we're, they cry, I don't know how many times, the whole team of Angel Studios. And, and they, they love the movie. And, and when I heard that, that's when I, uh, I thought, we uh, bingo, we did it, you know, we did it because that's the goal. You want to make films, well, at least us, we make films for everyone. We don't make films for only who people who think like us, you know, for that, I invite people to pray the rosary with me on Facebook. You know, for that, I invite friends to come uh, with me to my Bible study in Mexico. But for movies, um, I want to reach more people, you know, I want to reach those who are not being rich. Eduardo, what's next for you and also for Angel Studios? Well, for us um, and Angel Studios, I think we're going to do together Mary, Mother of God, 
the Massacre of the Innocents. I think Whoa. that's going to be July. God willing, uh, we're filming. Is it already uh, produced? We, it's already filmed. No, we we will not. We are going to film in July, and that movie will come out next year in Christmas, 2025. God willing, but that's the one that we. Uh, as soon as I finish my tour in Latin America with Cabrini, uh, we're going to start reproduction on Mary. And then wow. later, a few other things. But right now, we're one at a time. Let's make sure that Cabrini is being seen by the whole world. And then after that, Mary. I, I am more than, I can't even tell you how excited I am for a movie about Mary. Mm -hmm. I am in love with Cabrini, but our mother, to do a movie about the mother of Jesus Mm -hmm. It deserves to be done. It needs to be done. So super excited to hear that. And thank you, Eduardo. Mm -hmm. Good luck on your travels. God bless you. I know you're yeah, you. uh, off to Mexico, I think, next for the premiere. Mexico's next, uh, March 20th. That's the premiere. Uh, it's coming out on March 21st, all Latin America. We're going to do a little tour worldwide. And then, um, and that's it, you know, next, next and next and next, you know, never, we can never stop. Life's too short, you know, <laughs> just like you, you never stop. You always working and thank you for that too you know together we're stronger thank you for your support and you know come with your family to malta uh when we are uh while we were filming mary i think you you, you love it i'd love that <laughs> we'll give you i'll, 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 I'll message we'll you about that let's do it <laughs> thank you so much eduardo congratulations you. thank you saying uh saint francesca javier cabrini pray for us pray for us amen god bless you thank you god bless you thank you Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Lila Rose podcast. It was a delight, as always, to talk to Eduardo, and I'm super pumped for Cabrini and the impact that it is making in the world. I'm also really excited and thrilled for this movie about Mary, the mother of God. Almost makes me cry just to talk about it because I've seen her depicted, Mary, who's my role model, seen her depicted in art, and I've seen her depicted in music, and I've seen her depicted, obviously, in Holy Scripture. And these depictions are beautiful, but we haven't had a movie about Mary in my lifetime and certainly that I've ever seen before my lifetime when movies were just starting to be made that actually does any kind of justice to Mary, the mother of God, in my opinion. And I couldn't think of a better team than Eduardo's that they can give it a true shot at doing this right. So please pray. Pray for Metanoia Films, Eduardo's film company. Uh, pray for the people involved in creating this project about the mother of God and pray that it can reach millions of souls with the incredible story about how Jesus Christ was born. Don't forget, as always, to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you guys next time.